Good evening, I'm Mayor Mark Northrup. I'd like to call the Hudsonville City Commission to order for March 8th, 2022. This is a regular session. Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the city clerk call the roll, please? Uh, Commissioner Bullheis? Here. Branson? Here. DeBray? Here. Grote? Here. Lerar? Here. Nitre? Here. Mayor Northrop? Here. Before I uh, call for public comments, I'll ask for the commission and the chambers to have a moment of silence. If you pray, uh, I would ask you might want to consider those in living in strife in Ukraine and Russia uh, for, th for no fault to those of their own. Uh, they're living in some terrible situations and it reminds me how blessed we are to live in a country such as America. Thank you. If there are people in the audience that would choose to address the commission, you're welcome to do so now. Hearing and he seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda items. There are five minutes of city commission work session dated February 8th, regular session dated February 8th, Terra Square Advisory Board dated January 12th, minutes of the Planning Commission regular session dated February 16th, and minutes to the Personnel Committee <clears throat> dated February 24th. Are there any changes to those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving, I'm sorry, we need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as, consent agenda as presented. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and supported. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda items say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. We will continue on. If you are a city commission, uh, I've had noticed that uh, apparently when this is recorded for the TV, HC TV, that uh, sometimes the, um, it is not, doesn't pick us up. So it's important that you hold the mic, mic down when you do speak to the, uh, to the chambers. I'd like to move on to new business, public safety, February public safety statistical reports. Fire Department, uh, Acting Chief Steve Essenberg. Steve. It's on the bottom. I think it hurts. Yeah, you gotta hold that button for a second. There you go. No, you're good. Good evening. Uh, month of February, we had 43 calls for service. The majority of them were medical related. Um, a few fire type related calls put a breakdown in there for you. Um, on the fires, I think the only one that was notable was we did have a fire at American Auto Coat that was in their um, thermal oxidizer where they burn off their paint fumes. They had a power outage that Sunday morning and the system didn't reset properly. And by Sunday afternoon, it was burning in the oxidizer. Uh, quickly extinguished, so that we took care of that real quick. Other than that, it's been kind of a, it was kind of a normal month. Our calls are up a little bit from last year, um, but we're still behind 2020 a little bit, so doing good. And I put our trainings in there. We did an ice rescue training, and we did some live fire attack training as well. Any questions? Any questions for Steve? Thank you, Fire Chief. Moving on to the Sheriff's Department. Sergeant Jeff Staninga. Good evening, it's nice to see you all again. Uh, month of February was an average month for us as well. Uh, the only thing that was up was traffic stops. So uh, I just spoke with one of my deputies uh, before the meeting and she said uh, somebody stopped and talked to her in a parking lot at Vanderlands where she was doing radar and the guy was just so thankful he's been seeing a huge um, 
uptick in our presence on 32nd and traffic stops. I just wanted to stop and say thank you for doing so. So we're still out there. 190 stops is pretty good for, for one city. So they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, on top of that, there was 29 winter parking tickets issued. I think we are going to slowly be done with that now. Uh, they wrote a phenomenal amount of tickets this year for winter parking. Uh, last week we had about 75 kids come in. Uh, from preschool, Huntsville Christian Preschool, and uh, they did went to the fire side and the police side, and we got to spend some time with kids finally after two years of not being able to do any of that kind of stuff. And if you didn't see the the Eagle 5K, which is always a big deal in the city, uh, cams for the last two probably three years uh, is finally up and running again. They're going to do it some completely different location this time. Uh, they're going to start at the ECC, so we're working on some routes and we've got to get. Mr. Dahl and get those approved and go from there. Other than that, it's been a, it's been a good month. Uh, nothing else major to report on. Any questions? Jeff, I'll ask you, but it's me for all three of you. Where are we in masking mandates for um, the community? Is there any, there's nothing out there now, is that correct? I don't think so. Maybe some personal businesses would probably, some may prefer them, but uh, for the most part, no. No masking mandates for us. How is parking at the 5K, the 5K at the ECC, how is that going to work for parking? We have to have our meetings yet. Okay. So we have lots of concerns. Because that out. fills up the high school parking lot typically. Yeah. So I like the idea of having on the north side of town just because we have so many major roads like Highland and New Holland and 32nd, which we had to close down before. But we won't have to close many, if any, roads <clears> if we can go from there. But there, there's, there's parking at the church across the street. There's parking at High School Christian. Maybe they, maybe they can boss people. I don't know. So that's all stuff to get discussed. Very good. Anything else for uh, Sergeant? Is that 5K this spring then? It is. It's April 29. So we'll see the traffic control next month. If we have to close roads, yes. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Very good. Dave Dahl, Emergency Management Direct Department. Oh, good evening. Um, February was uh, relatively quiet for us, uh, and I noted in there that uh, at our department meeting we came up with a list of training topics for the for the county because they generally run county uh, run EM training just about every month. Well, we haven't done it in a couple of years, and apparently we've never done it while the new EM director was there because it was a surprise to him. So we're working on uh, um, trying to get a, a training uh, regimen going. And if, uh, if the county doesn't do it, then we'll do some our, ourselves. We can get people to come in and be guest speakers at our meetings and give us a, a little bit of a, a little bit of training for us. Um, and then uh, Marn Fest. So we don't usually go to Marn. Um, but uh, last year, we went and helped them out. And they were in kind of a panic, helping with their uh, 5K and their parade. And they apparently loved it. So they asked me to uh, sit in on their planning sessions to talk about traffic. and. Um, uh, so uh, I was able to have some input there and hopefully uh, enable them to have a, a safe route and a safe uh, event. Any questions, comments? Anything for Dave? Hearing none, thank you. Right, thanks. Moving on to number eight, traffic control order. Is there a motion? make a motion to approve temporary traffic control order number 22-01 for closure of Harvey Street from School Avenue to Plaza Avenue on May 3, 2022 for Love Your Neighbor Fashion Show. Second, the end. It's been moved and supported. Uh, Jeff, this is template. We've done this route before. I think this is our third year doing yeah. the fashion show. Are you in the fashion show, Jeff? I heard you were. <laughs> I deserve that. Uh, any other questions on this uh, motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Lerar? Yes. Uh, Branson? Yes. Bullheis? Oh. Uh, Estane? He stepped out. He stepped yes. down. Uh, DeVray? Yes. Groot? Yes. Nitre? Yes. Mayor Northrop? Yes. Traffic control order is approved. Moving Just on. Just a note on that. Uh, they asked um, if it would be okay to use the co-op property for parking um, and at the time that I was asked that the plan was that the co-op was going to vacate the property by the end of March and I didn't see an issue with it but
co-op just recently emailed me and asked if they could maybe stay another month. So there may be a conflict there. I just said if there is a conflict, we'd have to notify the co-op. I don't think there would be an issue with it because it's a Saturday and shouldn't be a conflict, but um, we're, we're looking into that, so. Anything else? No. Thank you. Moving on to City Treasurer's monthly report for the month of January. <clears throat> Dale, I'm I, looking here. But <laughs> I know, I switched sides. Well, Jill switched me sides. Sorry. So we'll start with the general fund summary. Um, really, I just wanted to point out the percent of budget right now, year to date, we're at 115.2 of revenues and at 64.1 two of expenditures on the revenue summary report we'll be able to see that we brought in a little bit over 36,000 um, for revenues in the general fund which is about 17,000 more than the two prior years and that brings our revenue to date to um, four million eight hundred fifty six thousand a hundred and sixteen dollars it's uh right point that out though that the big uptick is the the bar for the right yep that was outlined last so month that that was for the uh, the co-op co-op property loan that we got um expenditure summary for january was 259,112 which is right in line where we were the last two years and that brings our expenditures to date to um, two million eight hundred sixty four thousand three hundred sixty two which is about two hundred twenty thousand more than the prior year And then we'll move on to the investment report. This is their investment report for January So you'll see at the top um, We had a CD from Sturgis Bank mature and so what I did is I went ahead and bought one with Financial Northeastern at 0.5. So that increased, you know, two basis points basically. How long has that held? Six 12 months. months. 12 months. Yeah. Right now I'm doing short term just because we're supposed to be in a rising rate environment uh, too. Yeah. And so I'm not wanting to lock in for anything longer than You're raising that. Raising rates are pretty soon. Stand right. by. Yeah. So that brings our um, average rate of return to 1.37, and that means we brought in um, $4,865 in investment revenue. Any questions on those? Any, any questions or feedback from the commissioners for C Finances? Hearing none, we'll move on to payment of the bills. Thank you, Kayla. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to confirm the payment of the bills in the amount of $289,498.35 and to confirm payment of bills paid between meetings and reviewed by the Finance Committee. I'd support that motion. It's been moved and supported. Kayla, anything unusual about the bills this month? No, it should be pretty standard. Huh. <clears throat> Any questions? Discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner DeVray? Yes. Uh, Nitri? Yes. Bullheis? Yes. Branson? Yes. Grote? Yes. Lorar? Yes. Mayor Northrop? Yes. Pay the bills. Moving on to item number 11, ACH funds distribution. Is there a motion? I will make a motion to confirm the funds distributed via automated clearinghouse in the amount of $193,221.92, which were distributed between meetings and reviewed by the city manager. I support that motion. This has been moved supported. Any discussion on the ACA, ACH funds distribution? Hearing none, roll call please, clerk. Commissioner DeBray? Yes. Nitre? Yes. Bullheis? Yes. Branson? Yes. Grote? Yes. Lorar? Yes. Mayor Northrop? Yes. <coughs> Moving on to item number 12, budget adjustments 36 to 42. Is there a motion? I will make a motion to adopt the 2021 2022 budget adjustments 36 through 42 as drafted. Support. It's been moved and supported. Um, I think the memo is pretty self explanatory. It wasn't, we do this how often, Patrick? Quarterly. We do it quarterly. Um, 
they're always going to spend it more than we initially expect. But <coughs> I didn't see anything that caught my eye here. Did you want to speak to anything here? Kayla can. Oh, Kayla? Mm -hmm. No, they're pretty, a small number of them, seven, really, that not that many. So these are all just um, things that have happened. So, for example, the fiber that we thought was necessary had to be expanded. Um, the loan closing and interest payments are in there, too. Um, for the year and then there's just some TIF stuff that needed to be um, adjusted just because they had plans approved that were done after the budget was printed um, and then really just a one library transaction that really netted out to not even an increase so very minimal that fiber expense that was just a one-time install mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Yes, the monthly charge for that is uh, 200 a month, um, but we're getting rid of our um, cable TV, so we're actually going to come out ahead on our on that utility bill with internet. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion for the uh, city treasurer? I have one real quick question: 3302 Prospect, item 38. Which property is that referring to? That's the co-op property. Okay, and yes. then rent will help offset that cost, correct? It does, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know exactly, Kayla, what that is. So rent is 5500 a month. So now that they expended a few months, it should pretty much net. Um, our interest payment's only about 2700 a quarter, but we did have loan closing costs of about 10000 which is why that number is twenty. But for this fiscal year, if, we're, if they are there for five months, times the 5,500, that's 27. So we'll actually make out better. And just for the update, we do have a draft purchase and development agreement from the developer on that that I'm working through with the attorney right now. So hope to come back to this body within a few, maybe two, three months to have that approved. And yeah, we're hoping to get this thing closed up quickly. Their proposal looks to be in line with what well, so the, the purchase and development agreement will uh, spell out the steps that they need to go through, which will include going through the full site plan approval process. So we haven't actually seen the plan yet, but the agreement is the first step to lock in what the price is and what the expectations are at the timeline. And just to see that. Yes. The chances are the property will sit vacant then for a couple months. Correct. Kayla, I just want to tell you, nice job on your notes here. Oh. Put your name at the bottom next time okay. so I know it's you. <laughs> Sounds good. Any other questions on the uh, adjustments to the budget? There is a motion on the floor. Once again, any discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please, clerk. Commissioner DeFray? Yes. Nitray? Yes. Bullheis? Yes. Branson? Yes. Grope? Yes. Larar? Yes. Mayor Northrop? Yes. Make the adjustments. Moving on to item 13 in administration, assessing contract with the Ottawa County. And there is a memo from the city manager on this. Um, this is something we did, what, two years ago, I believe? 19. So, 19. Yeah, so well. now we're looking at our third year. Uh, just from my casual observation, we haven't had any impact to our assessing process with the city. So. Um, I'll ask for a motion. Is there a motion? We'll make a motion to approve and authorize the execution of the attached agreement for property assessment administration services between the city of Hudsonville and Ottawa County as drafted. Second the motion. It's been moved and supported. Uh, Patrick, is, is there any real changes here from the current process? No, I, I noted uh, they, they just inserted some uh, language uh, enabling law language that needed to be in the contract that enables them to perform these services. Um, but the big thing is, um, when we first started this, they did a, a, an, a guesstimate as to how much they're actually going to incur in terms of cost for providing these services versus what they're gonna charge us. And I asked Josh that question today. I said, how close were you? And he said $800 off. So that was wow. a pretty good guess. So the inflation, the, the cost increases you're seeing over the next three years are just inflationary cost increases. They're not to cover additional costs that weren't being paid for uh, before. So um, it averages out about 4% 4, 4 per year 
and that covers what they anticipate for um, wage increases and also um, benefit cost increases with their health care. So I think in the end, though, we're still coming out very much ahead financially from having our own in-house um, assessor, assessing department. Uh, we do lose the day-to-day, face-to-face contact, but honestly, I think I've seen Josh have an appointment maybe twice in the three years, um, and any questions that we do get on property, he handles them right away. You know, you can call him directly, and he's going to be here next week mm -hmm. for Board of Review. So, um, yeah, it's been a really good value for the city, and I, I would strongly recommend we continue. Patrick, just real quick question on that. If you were to guess the advantage to the city to hire this out versus having it in-house, what would you put that, guess that savings would be for us? We did a cost analysis. Yeah, I like, have that information. It was like 20000 a year. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, okay. wasn't jump chain. Yeah, because we're paying, I mean, this is an eighty four to $87,000. <clears> um, you, know, you look at that as the equivalent of a salary. Mm -hmm. and you'd have benefit costs on top, on top of, of that. that. Um, and the, one of the big reasons that we decided to change was it, it was the job market for assessors was becoming really competitive. And there was a lot of poaching going on from um, community to community. And we were in that position where Dan was retiring and we were debating on should we try to go out and get somebody that's qualified or and probably pay them top dollar to come here or look at this option. I just thought it was important to revisit that. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good guess, though. Probably twenty to thirty thousand would be an estimate. Any other questions on this uh, renewing of the property, <coughs> assessing contract with the county? I just add that I've had the privilege to be on the board of review and work with Josh directly, and, and he does a great job with that. And it's nice to have the the added resource context if he knows what else is going on in the county as well, and that's provided some helpful information for residents as they participate in that process. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. Anything else? Hearing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Larar? Yes. Branson? Yes. Bullheis? Yes. DeBray? Yes. Grote? Yes. Nitre? Yes. Mayor Northrop? Yes. Thank you, Patrick. Job well done. Moving on to item number 14, recommendation to award a mowing contract. Is there a motion? <coughs> motion to award contract to Davidson Law and <coughs> Grounds for mowing, fertilization, and weed control per, per the RFP in the amount of $89,644. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, Bob, I think your memo was pretty straightforward here. Um, it's good we lock this in because I think prices are going to really rocket here pretty soon with fuel costs in particular and fertilizer costs going up. So I would suspect, expect we have a pretty good competitive price there. Any questions or discussion from the commission? I've never heard about this company. Are they, Bob, are they local? Sorry to get you up. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, they're actually based in Allendale. <coughs> uh, their primary customer right now are GVMC uh, property management companies. They do a lot of student housing, new apartment complexes, condos, and things of the sort up there. Okay. I have a question. Um, of all the bids, I mean, we got three that are pretty close to each other. Um, you know, around the the one that we accepted, and then we have four that are almost double, do you perceive that as basically, we really don't want the work, but if we have to take it, we're gonna make some money on it? I, I would be a lot more hesitant, or um, we've seen the same thing the last time we bid this contract out in 2018, and what's up at the top there are the big companies, the, the big companies that have been around a long time, and a lot there more are overhead. advantages there. Um, but same thing, speaking of what you just said too, I, I think we got bids to the tune of we're going to put this price tag on here. We're already staffed up for the season. We already have a workload ahead of us. But if these guys bite on this, we'll somehow find a way. You know, we'll drop customers if we have to. If, if we can get them to pay us this amount, it will be worth the frustration. Um, and, and down at the bottom, end, we see smaller companies a little overhead. We have, I think we're striking a good balance with this Davidson group. Awesome. 
Thanks for uh, doing the research on it. Anything else for uh, Bob? Motions on the table. Roll call, please. Commissioner Branson? Yes. Lerar? Yes. Bullheis? Yes. DeVray? Yep. Grote? Yes. Nitray? Yes. Mayor Northrop? Yes. I just want to, I just want to, um, before you move on, I want to commend Bob too, because <clears throat> what wasn't presented in this is the reason we're in this scenario, and I think what drove a lot of those costs hikes was we are bidding this much later than we normally would have, but our hand was forced because our contractor quit unexpectedly. So um, a lot of credit to Bob because he put together a bid RFP package and got it out really quickly before everyone had gotten their work assigned for the year. and. Um, I think it yielded better results than what we were expecting on those three bottom ones. So thank you. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, Bob. I'll take it to lunch, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Motion carries. <coughs> we'll be moving on now to appointments to boards and commissions. A couple uh, new faces a new f on the uh, ZBA and I think Board of View. No, just the Z ZBA. I thought, did we do the Board of Review already? Yeah, we did. Yeah. So just the ZBA, um, any updates on this? You, worked, you got these from? Dan. Dan. I don't know Jeremy, but I know Ron Foster. He's um, on our Terra Square Advisory Committee. He's a member in the co-work space and yeah. uh, just a good guy. So I, I think he'll do a great job. He's an attorney, so understands law and um, will be a good addition to the ZBA. These are all um, breeding grounds for us to develop new planning and city commissioners to boot. So I'll call for the motion. Make a motion to approve mayor's appointments to boards and commissions as listed. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any other questions? Uh, working with the HR manager, Andrea, and we're going to uh, kind of clean up how we assign or go through this process of signing some of these people to commissions so, and boards. So hopefully, uh, we have a little more defined process. It's been a little bit helter-skelter over the years sometimes, as you're well, I think you're aware. Any other discussion? Motion's on the table. Roll call, please. Commissioner Grote? Yes. Bullheis? Yes. Branson? Yes. DeVray? Yes. Lavar? Yes. Nitre? Yes. Mayor Northrop? Motion carries before I call to adjourn. I'll uh, ask every department head here if they have anything else to add. Dave? Jeff? Steve, Bob, Jill. Uh, Capcon is next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. Who's Where going? Go? Jack and Larry and Patrick. Then it's in Lansing. Lansing. Oh, that's great. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Larry's like I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best. Uh, I looked at the agenda today. It looks appears to be the best day. We usually just go for one day, whatever the better of the two is, is Wednesday. So um, if that works for you guys, and I'm happy to go Tuesday too if you want, but uh, there's much more breakout groups and better general sessions on Wednesday. And I'll just send an email to you about um, meeting here early in the morning on Wednesday and we'll take the van. So it's Jack. Jack and Larry. Okay. Jack and Larry. All right, got it. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Andrew, you have anything to bring up? Maybe you want to say why you're here. It's not normal. We see the HR director. Yeah, I'm here because I am going to fill in for Jill when she is out of town on the next um, work session, and then I'll be filling in again in May. So, try and do a good job of sitting in her chair. <laughs> You'll do fine. Anything else? No. Kayla? Um, I just finished settling with the county for the 2021 <clears throat> tax rule. So there was about 88,500 of delinquent taxes that weren't collected at the city level. Um, 22 of that were for city. The rest were for the county or the school. So um, based on the calendar, we should expect payment by mid April. Um, other than that, we'll be ready for the next roll whenever Josh has it ready. I know he's having March quarter review, but usually once he has those numbers, 
we can start prepping for the next roll. Very good. Can you give an update on the enhancement grant too from the state for the Barry Allen realignment? <laughs> yeah, so last week we submitted the paperwork they required. Um, within 30 days, they're gonna send a grant agreement, um, MEDC and the city. Um, we'll then review it ourselves. We have a one week to turn it around. Um, and then after that, once it's approved and all signed within 30 days, we ex could expect 50% down. And then afterwards, it's going to be reimbursement based. So hopefully by the end of the fiscal year, we'll at least half half of the money. So that one week turnaround will be a little mm -hmm. tricky because we'll need to get that in front of this body for approval. Mm -hmm. Um, unless there's some flexibility there, right. we might need to call a special meeting or... It right. might be a special meeting in the spur of the moment. Right. right. Depending on where that falls. Yep. Based right now how the timeline is going, we should be pretty good to get it into the first April meeting and not have to have you guys come back. But I will keep you in the loop on that. As long as we have a quorum. Mm -hmm. And 18 hours notice. And 18 hours notice. notice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's go down the dice. Tobin, good evening. I have nothing to add. I have nothing to add. Thank you. I'm in good shape as well. Phil? Kayla, welcome to this side of the room. You get to hang with the cool kids. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Larry? Nothing. I'm not one of the cool kids. <laughs> Dan, are you cool? Silly question. He's a, yeah. line, he's a linebacker. <laughs> I have nothing. Jack? All good. Patrick? Uh, just the work session that Andrew mentioned, that is at the end of this month, for Tuesday. Uh, that's the 22nd, I believe. So please put that on your calendars. That will be a... a <coughs> 7 o'clock? 6 o'clock? Uh, it's... I think we said... Did we put a time on that? 6 o'clock. Okay. 6 that works. And that's the agenda. What's the agenda? The agenda item will be a meeting with the gentleman from the Frost uh, Research Center who's going to be talking about the survey, the community survey. And we're going to be giving him, you're going to be giving him some guidance on how to structure that survey, what questions you'd like to ask the community. So maybe give some thought. What I'm going to do ahead of that is I will send out the survey from 2011 that we did just to kind of some of you have seen it, some of you may not have seen it, but it'll jog your memory on some of the questions we asked and where the residents were at at that point. So uh, I'll, I'll email that out to everyone if I had. What was the date? The 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. Is that a Tuesday? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Two weeks from today. 27th. 22nd. Second. 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. Anything else, Patrick? No. Last chance, commissioners, department heads? I'll call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. It's been moved to support. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.